How long has the project been here? Well, it was started by Dr. Rausch and uh, Professor Norris in 75. And uh, they built the first couple of buildings, got a couple of birds. Nothing good. There were birds donated by people who meant well, but couldn't be breeders. And I came in 77 and started raising money. And Peregrine Fund gave us some birds and some partners gave us some birds. So we first bred birds in 79 and really started making an impact on the wild in 79. Primarily in olive peregrines? Yeah, almost exclusively in olive peregrines. We've also um, done some releases with Harris hawks and Aplomato falcons and Elfowls. But the vast majority of the work and most of the funds and most of our heart has been in the peregrine falcon work. How many, uh, how many peregrines has the project produced since it's been established? I don't know how many we've produced off the top of my head, but we've released over 500. And there's over 100 of them breeding in California now, so That's great. it's starting to be a fairly significant number and having a major impact. Or like the Apple models, how were birds acquired for the project? Like Apple model falcons, where they would birds take for a while? Or well, in 1977 and 78, the Chihuahua Desert Research Institute took a few from Mexico, and they actually were the first people to breed Apple model in captivity. John Langford, Granger Hunt, Dean Hector, and those people. They gave them to us in 82. Yeah. And then in 87 and 88, we went down in conjunction with Peregrine Fund and got some more breeding stock. So we've, there's been two collections about 10 years apart. We now have about 25 or 30 between Boise and here. Uh, you're, re you're reintroducing the alpha bottles then? Texas. Yeah, we've started releases there, sort of experimental releases to develop the release techniques. And in 1990, we'll start releasing them in Mexico as well, in northern Mexico, where they're extinct. And then there's plans, or they're making plans now for recovery in New Mexico and Arizona. Probably Arizona first, and then we're not sure what about New Mexico. Uh, talking with Brian Walton, and your title is? Coordinator of the Predatory Bird Research but how many people do you have here to take care of the project? Well, we have six to eight full-time people and 50 or 60 seasonal people. Seasonal people mostly nest site and hack site attendants or students doing thesis and uh, independent study. Then we have somebody who takes care of the adults and somebody who raises the quail. So a couple people that work in the lab or uh, a couple people that uh, help release the birds in, in the spring. The off season, they work around the facilities, and we have a, a few people in the office that do the uh, administration and the accounting and travel and all that sort of thing. What do you, what do you, what do you, uh, anything that uh, you can reflect on as far as your own personal feelings about the project and its future, and as far as or like what you know, just just any special projects here or anything that you think you're. Well, when we started, we were really interested in pesticides and the making the peregrine, helping the peregrine recover. It's been real satisfying because a lot of birds we produce are breeding. You know, very large percentage of the birds we produce, larger than we anticipated. So it's really, it's like falconry or, or uh, getting your PhD thesis or whatever. For us, the, the big deal was to see the birds we produce breed. Um, it's also been a secondary effect is it really educate a lot of people. It seems everybody in California knows about the Peregrine Falcon now. I mean, virtually everybody has a t-shirt or seen one or read the news or whatever. So that's been pretty satisfying. And it's fun to work with a bunch of people who are all friends and we try to have a good time to do a good job for the money that people give us. So, um, in the future, it's a little questionable now because the Peregrines, up to 100 pairs in California, and most of our funds and uh, most of our strongest effort has been with Peregrine Falcon. So we have to develop some new programs that we can get behind. We're hoping the Apple Model Falcon and some other pesticide research will be what uh, is in store for our future.